Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Uh, apologies, it's been uh, quite some time since I've had uh, a new video, a new walkthrough. Um, I haven't been doing much shooting throughout uh, this winter, uh, but last week I did have the opportunity to work with uh, Genesis again, Genesis Halifax, uh, in shooting the new GB80. SUV. So I wanted to do something that was on site. Uh, I wanted some nice clean photos, something we could do inside. Uh, and based on the location, uh, I wanted to work with the uh, the Westcott, the Ice Light 2, do some light painting um, of this uh, of this vehicle in kind of the service area of the dealership. So uh, I'll take a couple minutes, go through what I did with the photo, show you in Lightroom which photos I used and which ones I blended, and go through the steps in what I did in Photoshop as well. So let's take a look. So here in Lightroom, um, there's a couple of photos I used. You'll see I took, um, I don't know, a dozen or so, 15 photos of that particular angle. Uh, and I did use a couple for the blending. So I actually used a, a combination six images, one here and a couple more here. And I'll show you what I was doing uh, when I was taking the photos and what I wanted to do with those photos and what I wanted to light. Uh, with the vehicle being quite big and also being a dark vehicle, uh, dark ve vehicles are notoriously difficult to light paint. So, um, so I made sure I did capture everything I wanted for the light. Um, so when I got into Photoshop, I would have those exposures ready to go. Here's the first one here. You'll see there is, there's some kind of not very nice reflections you can see here. And this is based off the left of the frame is kind of the entrance to this area. Uh, it was almost pitch black here, but there was nothing we could do about this light that always remained on. Um, also in the background, you'll see this monitor that is very distracting. So I want to take that out, which I did in Photoshop. Um, another photos I had taken, this is the one that went over the top. Uh, I wanted to get a nice clean line over the side of the car. Um, I did have, um, um, I was able to get the reflection almost all the way of the car. There's a little bit on the end here that I'll fill in later because I wanted that full line. Um, I did get over the top in the windows, which is great. And there's a little reflection here. I'll probably want to take out a little later. The other exposure, here's some of the lights as well. Uh, the reflection on the ground, I didn't really, wasn't a big fan of that, uh, but I did like, well, oh, kind of switched off it here. And, but I did like the colors here, and I also like how the brake light actually created this light back here in this color. Uh, and I'm gonna use that color a little later to really separate the car a little more from the background using the color of that light. Um, also with this, I wanted to light the inside. Now, if you look at these, uh, if you're thinking this of a full photo, without having the inside lit up, it's gonna be very, very dark. Uh, the only thing that's really gonna separate that would be this, this bar that's on the top. So I made sure, uh, and what I did, this isn't actually the interior lights of the car, uh, it's the ice light. So what I did is I uh, put it on, 15 second exposure. Um, I think it was even 15, it could have been less, but I simply put the light on the seat um, and turned it down a little bit and take, took the photo. Um, here's the headlight. So if you're looking at these lights, uh, different color, obviously, uh, with these kind of parking lights here. Uh, and I did include the, uh, the headlight in case I wanted to use that. And at the front, now with these photos, I did light kind of the top for this one. Didn't really like that. Got the lights, got the side, uh, but wasn't able to get the front. So I just took one uh, additional exposure here for the front, the front grill, and that we're going to use that later. All right, so let's take a look at uh, kind of the exposures that we have here. I'm going to turn all of these off and we'll start working with uh, the actual car itself. And let's turn all of these on. And I wanted to show you exactly what I did in terms of blending these images. So what I did is I took all the images in Lightroom. Um, I did edit in Photoshop as layers. Uh, to group those layers. And as I did that, what I went through and really just checked out what the uh, exposure was lighting and named that accordingly. Because when you get into a lot of layers, of course, now this isn't a ton of layers, but when you get into more layers that are very similar, uh, best practice, of course, name your layers so you know exactly uh, what layer that is and what is lit and what layer you have to work on. So here on the side, um, what I did here, we take off this mask, uh, I'll give you an idea of what this is. And um, uh, with the photo, oh, let's get rid of this here. And looking at the exposures, what we did, we had a side profile, as I noted in Lightroom, uh, we had the side light as well. 
and that's going to be, as you see here, it's the light that's on the side of the car, uh, as well as the reflections from the tail light that's in the back. Um, here on the side, you'll see it's kind of masked out in the interior. This is on and off with the interior exposure. We have the headlight as well. So I did blend using the headlight and I left this side marker as well. Uh, different color, kind of separate that, make it a little more, a little stand out a little more with the, with the color. Um, also with the headlight, uh, we do have the wheels. Um, now the wheels from One Exposure, I did like how they're kind of lit on the inside. It, it's dark and it has a nice rim light. Uh, but really honestly looking at it, it just wasn't, it didn't pop enough. It wasn't visible enough. Um, so I did take another exposure of the wheels just to bring those out. And this exposure here, I did blend these and I just kind of, what I did is I lowered the opacity. This is down to 64% on this at hundred. It's just a little bit too high, so I wanted to take that down. Let's leave it up there. And the front, so this is on and off with the front. If I didn't have that exposure, this is of course what it looked like. Um, pretty pretty poor, I didn't really like it. Um, the grill of the car is a big, uh, a big factor, a big identifying uh, feature of the car, and I did want to include that. So that's kind of the blending that I did here. Uh, I won't go into detail how you uh, blend exposures. We can look at that in another video if you're interested. There's plenty of videos um, online from other photographers that really get into uh, blending layers and looking at how to do that. Um, now, looking at some of the adjustments that I had here, um, we'll look at a couple things. Now, I'll turn them all on. This is the final photo, uh, but I did wanna show you a couple things that I did. So let's get rid of all these and we'll start from the beginning. So the first layer I wanted to do, uh, a cleanup layer. This is where I'm gonna take out all the little blemishes. I'm gonna work on some of the reflections of the car. Uh, there's some dirt on the ground as well and some little spots, so I wanted to take those out. And anything in the background, uh, I wanted to kind of remove, um, I wanted to put that on one layer. So this is the cleanup layer here. Uh, you'll notice a couple things. If we turn this on, you're gonna see one thing that uh, I kind of overlooked. Uh, I don't know why I didn't see when I was taking the photos, uh, but after looking at the final, I knew it would be easy to take out. And that is my camera bag that's actually stuck over here. Uh, you're gonna see my small camera bag and the case that the ice light comes in. Um, the good thing is it's dark here. We could easily blend using um, these pipes or whatever they are here and some of the background on the ground. So that was an easy clone out. Um, also what I did, I did take out the monitor in the background uh, and you'll notice from the reflection of that monitor, there's a little reflection that's on the car and I deal with that a little later. Um, the second thing I wanted to do was um, with this cleanup is you'll see on the side of the car, quite distracting in terms of the reflections we have. We have some lights here. We have this, I'm not even sure what that is honestly. So um, I don't know, some tires or something. I don't even know what it was, but I wanted to take that out. Uh, and what I do is I use the uh, Stamp 2 clone uh, tool and I went through just kind of blending using some portions of the photo. Um, so starting here and kind of working over. And then when I had a nice piece here, blending that over to here. Same thing on this side, a little more difficult because we have some variations here um, with the colors and what's reflected in the background. But I want to do my best to kind of take that out, to take out most of the distractions while not making it uh, completely obvious that that was kind of cloned out. Uh, second thing with logos, uh, this is just, there's some logos in the background and I know there's kind of this rotary lift has a little logo here, uh, but it wasn't very visible. But in terms of these actual, this worth and other logos here, I wanted to be sure to take those out if they're using them on social media. Um, they always like to have only that brand um, in the photos. Now, these brands in the background probably not gonna make much difference. Uh, if there was actually a Hyundai vehicle in the background, um, Hyundai isn't exactly the Genesis brand. Uh, Genesis, of course, a brand on its own and using them, they do want it to reflect only Genesis. So I want to take out some of those logos, just keep that on the layer in case I needed to take anything else, uh, else out with that. Um, this layer here, I like to call a light shine. And what this does is if we're looking at We'll zoom in here. Uh, we're looking at this streak of light and that's from me holding the ice light, walking around the side of the car. And these are, I really like these. I like these lights. Um, I like what it adds to the side, what it adds to the um, actually lighting the, com the uh, complete car. Um, but there are some things when it just doesn't, it, it doesn't work out on the end. Um, and you'll see this here. Um, I wanted to include kind of a, a shine 
to extend this so we can just get to the back of the car, making sure this back isn't exactly lost in a void of, uh, of darkness in the background here. Um, so what I did is I created this shape. I used the pen tool uh, and I just filled it in and sampled the color that probably would have been around here or here and just painted that in uh, with, um, with the brush tool. I did that throughout. Uh, you'll see on this uh, on the bottom here, these reflections are a little off. Uh, this is completely kind of a chrome um, kicker plate or whatever it is on the bottom. I didn't like how we had this here. I could have taken that out, but also kind of dark here, not as dark. Uh, much brighter and I just wanted to create a complete reflection on that. So I used the pen tool again and I made a selection around that and I filled it in with a color, probably would have been sampled from around here. Um, and that would basically recreate a kind of a reflection if I had the ice light and I was simply moving past the car probably around here, it would have created a reflection somewhat like that and I wanted to uh, reflect that in the photo. So I've kind of created that. Um, also created one on the front and you'll see it was kind of a mistake. I put it on the cleanup layer uh, But if we leave this off, you'll see that the reflection does not go all the way and I didn't really like that uh, We have the grill that's lit up. We have over here this portion and I wanted to be sure that these reflections extended all the way on uh, on the bottom front of the car itself, so um, On the cleanup layer, you'll see that I did extend those uh, should have been on this light shine uh, layer itself, but that's okay. Um, now a couple things, we're getting close to the end of the photo, so I'm liking how the car looks, uh, I like the reflections, it's popping, but there is some issues that I wasn't quite comfortable with. Now, especially here along the front of the hood, uh, it's getting kind of lost with the background. Uh, the good thing with the grill, that's lit up, uh, the interior is lit up as well, but I wanted to bring some kind of, um, I don't know, some sort of environment to the photo, a little bit of smoke, a little bit of haze, uh, but I wanted to do that with some color. So there's a couple layers that I created with this. Um, the first thing that I did is I used the color here from the reflection of the taillight uh, that happened, and I did sample that color. And what I did is uh, I kind of used that for a couple things. Um, what I did is I sampled that color and I used a brush tool, and I used kind of a smoke brush and I created a little bit of haze around that light. Um, and I also continued with the haze around the back of the car. You'll see here on the uh, one thing on the side, I did use this light and did the same thing with the smoke brush. If we looked at the smoke behind the photo itself, now on and off, you'll see how that really helps in terms of not only separating the car from the background, but it uh, does add some needed color to uh, to the photo. The car itself with the background uh, and with the ice light, there's not a huge amount of color and that's not really an issue, uh, but I did want to bring in some light there. So that's why I kind of added that to the background, just to create kind of the feeling that there is some light here, something coming in from the left frame and separating that from the background. Same thing I did with the uh, smoke behind too. It's, it's pretty much the same as that layer. Uh, but after I finished with that, I noticed that I didn't really cover much of the front here and I wanted that to be separated from the background as well. So that's kind of why I added that. That's a little lower in terms of the opacity, it's down to 20%. The first one is, is 36. But um, if we're thinking of the light, if it was coming from this area, probably a little brighter here than behind the car here. So that's why it's just slightly lower um, at 20%. Uh, a couple other things I did add some flares. If um, the lights, I found looking at the photo and looking at the right side of the frame, there was just something that it was just a little too dark. Um, I had brought in a couple of things to kind of frame the car a little better. You're going to see there's kind of a tool cart that's here on the right. Uh, didn't really light up all that well, but without it, I think it would have been, it wouldn't have been as strong a photo, so I'm glad I put it in there, but I did want to add a little light. So I did add two flares um, to this photo. The first one would have been right here, and that's just adding the impression that there is some light off frame that's slightly leaking in. And I think it really adds the light to the right, really complements what's going on to the left of the frame as well. And um, here with the last one was a rear flare, and that's just a tiny little reflection. And that's just, there was this light here on the back, and I couldn't, I couldn't successfully blend it well without it looking fake. Um, with the, the variations and kind of the, the colors here with the reflections, it just wasn't working out that I could get it 
on a completely straight line. Here, I'll zoom in so you can take a look at that. And so it was very hard to get some of this into here. So what I did is I just added a little flare. Uh, and that just adds a reflection for the impression to say some light was coming in. It just hit that particular point in the car um, and reflected on the back of the car. So um, that's it. That's some of the steps. I know there's quite uh, a lot of layers here. There's a lot of uh, different effects I put into the photo. Um, I find when I light painting a car, um, especially a dark car, there is considerable challenges. Uh, it's really easy to get the, the car lost in the background. It does take a lot of light. And with the ice light, if, if you're using the ice light, you're not using strobes. Um, the more times you go over with the ice light, you're just gonna continue to get these streaks. There's gonna be one here. There's gonna be one underneath. Uh, there could be some at different angles, depending on how you were lighting. And honestly, when you get those in there, it may be lit, but it's pretty much impossible to, uh, to get out and post. Uh, and it just, just looks terrible. So um, what I did is I cleaned that up just with the one. Uh, I made sure that we had some light over the top. And of course, making sure each portion of the car was lit uh, in each of the frames so I could take it into Photoshop later, work with any a kind of color I needed uh, so I could get the final photo that uh, I wanted to do. So that's it for this video. Thanks again. I know it's been quite some time. Uh, hopefully in the spring uh, soon, be able to get some more shoots as the weather gets a little better and start doing some more shoots outside and looking at um, some new stuff for 2021. So thanks again. I'll see you in the next video.